you look enthralled. You look really excited. I can't wait. <laughs> Time to reevaluate your staff there. <laughs> <laughs> you really see where your tax money's going there. That's not like, oh boy, we really dropped the ball on that one. <laughs> That's. Like, firefighters from Florida could have driven <laughs> yes, up there in time. In their defense, it was Christmas Eve. So, oh, it's fine if people die so, like, on Christmas So, like, they Eve. tried calling... T- I'm not saying I'm condoning them for being seven hours late to a fire that was 2.5 miles away. <laughs> it's just not, a, I, not great. In fact, I'm pretty sure I could run that in probably about an hour at least. I could spit the fire out I in that time. I could probably chug a beer I could just and spit that. on the fire. <laughs> just... <enough. laughs> In the fall, just before the house fire, a life insurance salesman came to the house, and when he saw that his sale wasn't going to be successful, he became infuriated, yelling at George, quote, your goddamn house is going up in smoke, and your children are going to be destroyed. You're going to be paid for the dirty remarks you have been making about Mussolini, end quote. (laughs) Ryan, I think we've, we've solved it. All right, well, it's been fun. <laughs> See you later. I will set this house on fire and your children are going to die. Huh. Yeah, Who pretty... could it be? <laughs> yes. Who could have done this? Did they, as, a, as their post-mortem, did they look in the cars to see if there were engines in them? No. Huh. 50 miles west of Fayetteville, a woman who operated a tourist stop told police that she saw the children the morning after the fire. Quote, I served them breakfast. There was a car with Florida license plates at the tourist court, too. End quote. Nice of her. Yeah. At all. <laughs> Giving him breakfast. Yeah, I mean, she's just... It's nice to have breakfast. Okay, well, I mean, yeah, I agree. Breakfast is nice. I enjoy okay. bacon. Agree to agree. <laughs> George and Jenny turned to a private investigator named C.C. Tinsley. Yeah. C.C. Tinsley's here. <laughs> that does sound What'd like... What'd you say? No bones, huh? Hmm. Mm. Sounds like a case for C.C. Tinsley. One suspicious revelation occurred when Tinsley discovered that a member of the coroner's jury who decided the Sauter house fire was an accident was the same life insurance salesman who had threatened George earlier in the fall. Who who put together this jury? The coroner? Uh, We're putting together a jury to investigate this crime. Can you can you uh, wrangle up all the um uh, maybe some, some lunatic salesman. Another interesting find occurred when Tinsley interviewed townspeople about the fire. Tinsley heard a rumor from the town minister that the fire chief had been telling people that he'd actually found a heart in the ashes of the Sauter home, and that he'd hidden it in a dynamite box and buried it where the home once stood. Why does the minister <laughs> tell rumors? <laughs> Tinsley persuaded the fire chief to show him where it was buried, but once dug up, the heart was actually beef liver and had never been in a fire. <laughs> oh darn it, I actually, uh, <laughs> that's my, my darn sandwich. No wonder that sandwich tasted so bad the other day. I, I mixed them up. They hired a private detective to go to Kentucky and find him. But strangely, the detective was never heard from again. That, I think that's the first time I've ever heard of a detective going missing. That's like a fish drowning. <laughs> I, I don't think the detective would have taken the money and run though because if you're a private eye unless it was a shit like if it was enough to survive for the rest of his life oh that's true yeah why would he, yeah that's I mean, probably built imagine. up a nice client base he's got throw his rolodex <laughs> it's not like that like they gave him a million dollars it was probably, probably like yeah. 5000 that's yeah, what the poster said for a few said. sandwiches yeah <laughs> that's a lot of, i mean those are some big sandwiches right. but yeah hey. point taken that there was some foul play at hand here something's going on something, someone someone took those kids you think they're still alive today maybe cuz they're still out there i think i believe they're out there they would have to be right If you have a parent who ever told you that they were stolen in a fire and given a wonderful breakfast the next day, let us know. (sighs) You just... And reported, quote, large tearing type wounds with missing tissue, end quote, as the body was missing most of its right leg. That's a shark, baby. I know I've seen Jaws at least six times. That's a shark. Well, not so fast. Huh? Don't jump to conclusions. I'm jumping. I've jumped. I've landed. Shark. It's a shark. Just keep in mind, things may not be what they appear. Huh? <laughs> and when you briefly look at the details, that seems highly plausible. No, it doesn't. So you switch now. You don't think yeah, of a shark. Yeah, this is baloney. I'm flip-flopping again. A little beside the point, but very impressive uh, on the great white shark's behalf that they can do such a clean bite. Well, it's a powerful animal. Yeah, hell yeah it I is. mean, it's not a bear, but it's, it's It could certainly animal. kill a bear, hands if down, if you dropped could, a bear in no, the ocean. You, yeah. No, if a bear... No. We've been over no. this before. The bear is the most deadly mm. animal of all time. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it's not. If you put a bear in any uh, playing field in the world, water... Nope, hippopotamus. Land. Nope, fuck you, dude. Hippopotamus a bear is the most, would kill you know a bear what? in a heartbeat. We're getting the high... This is a different episode. Fuck you. 
He's the Richard Dreyfus of this Jaws story. Exactly. This would be like if in Jaws there was a guy going around town just murdering people and then yelling, a shark! And then just tossing him in the ocean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In comes Richard Dreyfus with yeah, science. He's like, this is bullshit! <laughs> so obviously, she was aware of the cold. Did she have anything under the trench coat? That's a weird question. <laughs> Never mind. No, wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> You mean she was one of those, like, Well, I thought if she guys. was going to jump into the ocean naked, then maybe she was walking around with a trench coat specifically because she was naked underneath. Holy shit, you're right. You know? But probably not. That doesn't make a lot of sense. I mean, it kind of makes sense now that you put it that way. Oh, put it in the theory list. You break your neck on that. But the injury she sustained... Yeah, I, I don't think falling from this would cause your leg to fall off and <laughs> no. sharpen to a point. It sounds like a, like a Law & Order interview. Like they found the guy at the local grocery store moving boxes around. He's like, yeah, she had a hippie vibe to her. Yeah, I saw, I'd seen her out there by the rocks swimming naked. Also, what, were, what were you doing out there, sir? Uh... <laughs> Later, when he found out that Michelle had died in a shark attack, he wrote and eventually published this poem. Quote. Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay. <laughs> you know, wait to hear the poem. Oh, wait, he's, he's accusing her of, 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 oh, she's a real hippie. <laughs> Quote, the report said there was a tattoo, a butterfly on her shoulder which I remembered that night on my couch when I, like the shark, chewed on her lips and took off her shirt. What quote. the fuck? <laughs> no. Shame on him. <laughs> it's not even a good poem, it's just weird. No, it's very strange. This sounds like something a drunk man would say as he's laying on the sidewalk just babbling. And, I don't like that one bit. And the, like the shark chewed on her lips and took off her shirt? No, <laughs> the shark was not doing that, sir. <laughs> the the shark. shark is ten times less creepier than you. <laughs> Decker actually teamed up with an investigator around 2008 and wrote to the San Diego medical examiner asking them to reevaluate Michelle's case, which obviously wouldn't be the first thing on the to-do list of a person who murdered the victim. Gotta be honest, that's the first thing I'd do. Really? Yeah. Because you because of the guilt? Is that what you're suggesting? No, no, because they'd be like, well, couldn't possibly be him. No, nah, that's, that's yeah. I think that's, I was like, you better find this killer. I'm putting it on the bartender. That poem is unforgivable. <laughs> I feel like I need to just take a bath in hand sanitizer after listening to it. Was that in the testimony? I mean, it had to be. It's on the official timeline. Oof. Well, free... I did get a lot of media coverage. Though, I guess. So that's free, free advertising. So, so they're going by Dog Bark. They're going by Dog Bark. In a lot of ways, this dog is the real hero of the story, it seems like. I don't know if there's a lot of heroes in this one. No, right? no, but it doesn't look too good. Doesn't look too good. Could have been a... Coyote? <laughs> what? Uh, Los Angeles has got its fair share of coyotes running around. A six foot tall coyote that weighed 200 pounds. This is where a lot of people uh, sort of draw the line, right? <laughs> when you have three separate pieces of evidence that have DNA connotations linking you to the murder. If you're looking at, at the surface here, boy oh boy. I feel like People in prison for murder and serial killers tend to just... Claim things? Yeah, why do they do that? Sometimes people will claim things uh, in an effort to make themselves seem more accomplished in that field, I suppose. Well, none of us are impressed. No, Serial I'm not killers. <laughs> yeah, that's going to really let it sink in. They're going to see this video and be like, he's right. Pack it up. You know what? Let's, what, are we, what are we doing? Stop it. You're, you're really hitting at their heart right now. Stop keep it. Going, keep going, maybe you'll make a difference. Stop serial killing. Deer also reportedly obtained medical records of Jason's, illegally some might add, by dressing up and impersonating a doctor at Cedar sinai Hospital for two weeks where Jason had been a patient. I don't like I mean, this guy. he tricked people in a hospital for two weeks. People were murdered. And this guy's playing dress up? I know, but I'm just saying. He's like, whoa, what if I do this? Whoa. Well, he was doing it because he was I'll chasing. i put on a funny wig. In his, <laughs> in his mind, he was chasing justice. I mean, apparently the police hall of fame thought so, so. Is that a real thing? Yes, it is. I wouldn't be surprised if it was just him making that up. Him in different <laughs> costumes being like, yes, we're a real organization. And he cuts Talk the video. The president. So he's yes, talking. hello, I'm the president. <laughs> hey, it looks like that other guy just got a mustache. <laughs> Cooper, seated in seat 18C, ordered a bourbon and soda. He seems like a cool oh, yeah. dude. I don't think he even ordered the bourbon and soda to calm his nerves. I think no, he he's probably just like he's a badass. Soda. No. I'm D.B. Cooper. I'm a mystery man. Give me a bourbon. It's <laughs> <laughs> a big gulp. At first, she just put it in her pocket without looking at it. But then Cooper said, quote, Miss, you better look at that note. I have a bomb, end quote. <laughs> end no quote. funny stuff. 
<laughs> I also like how he says, do the job. I'll do the job. Like that's his threat, which actually to that's me- That's badass. Yeah, I'm just imagining like a camera just, just pushing in on him as he's like, If we were in today's age, this guy would definitely have headphones in playing Spotify playlists of epic soundtracks. He'd like have he, one of those shitty hoverboards. Not an actual hoverboard, but yeah, the shit. Yeah, he'd be like, or I'll do the job. And he'd take out his wheels, put them down, start moving up and down the aisle. <laughs> Knapsack, or I'll do the job. You think James Bond ever wore a clip-on bow tie? Yeah, I guess. Uh, well, you really, that does kind of. That's kind of a, takes the wind out well, of my maybe, sails Well, maybe if bit. he like <laughs> knew he had to do it quick, and that was Still, like an efficiency thing. If he was like, I'm gonna put my sunglasses on, it'll look cool if he was like, <laughs> clink. <laughs> People theorized that when Cooper jumped out, the money possibly fell into the Washougal River before eventually making its way to Tina Bar. That's, that's basically all they've theorized. I'm just imagining him just jumping out and immediately just <laughs> losing grip of all the bags. <laughs> just a man plummeting to earth with a bunch of money flying around him and being like, ah! It seems like a bad idea to make your get rich quick scheme to be to impersonate a criminal. Yeah, that's, that's a- uh, that... I wouldn't be like, ha ha, hey, it's me, the Zodiac Killer. I'll tell you a story. <laughs> what? Oh, oh. <laughs> His voice was described as low, no particular accent but spoke with an intelligent vocabulary. I would like some bourbon and some money or I will do the job. Sounds like a terrifying version of Siri. It's me, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> he was a student? In this theory, yes. I was thinking about it in like a, a cold, hard criminal way. I wasn't thinking like, spring break! <laughs> the second suspect is Dwayne Weber, who claimed to be D.B. Cooper on his deathbed. His wife, Joe, claims that in the hour of his death, Dwayne pulled her close and said, quote, I have a secret to tell you. I'm Dan Cooper. <laughs> what? I was trying to take a drink. <laughs> and I just imagined. <laughs> Go, closer, closer, closer. I have a secret to tell you. I'm, I'm, I'm the vendor of the sky. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I bet she did not see that one coming. No, she's probably she gonna be like, like, did he cheat on yeah, me? Exactly, did you cheat on me? I'm a man of myth. <laughs> Kenneth reportedly said, quote, there is something you should know, but I cannot tell you, end quote. And then he died? And then he died. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think happened? I'm gonna go Occam's razor on this one and just assume that he rocketed into the ground. A little juxtaposition of him being on the plane being like, I'll have a bourbon. And then two hours later, like, <laughs> What if the trench cut was like Batman, where it was like a flight activated suit that allows him to fly around like a flying squirrel? In my mind though, I don't imagine him being like, oh, here comes the tree line. I imagine him being like, oh, I can't see through the clouds. Oh, now I can. <laughs> Just like the wily coyote. Plume of smoke. Yeah. Oh, hey there, didn't see you walk in. That does it for this season of BuzzFeed Unsolved, but we will be back with a new season soon. I promise. Now I'm gonna get back to this case file. Mm. That's bullshit. <laughs> I'm just glad you didn't blame it on aliens. No ghosts here, no aliens. I mean, can you rule out that they were abducted? No. That's what I wanted to hear. He kills you, look at it. Look at your face. You can't stand it, can you? I can see your jaws clenching.